low. So my playbook is double down on all my usual sleep hygiene, which is about light removal. So I'm using my blue light blocking glasses. I'm pulling myself away from electronics, putting blue light filters on all my electronics, all that sort of stuff. I'm using my chili pad. I'm air conditioning the room. I'm being thoughtful about bedtime and wake up time. I'm using my little Alaska bear mask to be as dark as possible. So I'm doing all the stuff I normally do. But then I layer on two things. Oh, and by the way, remember, I'm always taking magnesium L3 and 8, which for me is a great sleep promoter. The two things I'm adding to fasting week are the Doc Parsley sleep remedy, which again, got to disclose this. I'm a small investor in that company. So feel free to just dismiss anything I say about it on that basis. But hopefully you can trust me enough to know I'm not talking about it because I'm an investor in it, but rather because I think it's the best stuff out there. What the parsley remedy does that I really like is it's using really good amounts of what I think are great sleep agents. I don't respond well to high doses of melatonin. So if I go on Amazon and buy one milligram of melatonin, I do not sleep well. I don't know why. Low dose of melatonin, which is what's in the parsley remedy, plus 5-HTP, plus four or five other things. They've actually had a formulation switch recently. I'm not even positive what's in the current formulation. I think I like it at least the same, maybe even a bit more. That could be in my head. But I take a full dose of that, which is three capsules. And I also take three capsules of something called phosphatidylserine, or PS100 is the by a Jero brand that I really like. So Jero makes this in a capsule and a gel. I like the gels more for some reason. It could be all psychological, but I go three of the parsley, three of the phosphatidylserine. And I take that about half an hour to 45 minutes before bed. And that seems to give me the most lift in terms of having no difficulty falling asleep, but more importantly, being able to stay asleep. Now, there is one other agent that I find really helpful, and I've only used it a couple of times, but if I get into a pinch and I'm really having a bad week, I will also use a medication called trazodone. Now, trazodone is a super, super old school antidepressant that ended up being a really bad antidepressant because even though it had great serotonin enhancing properties, nobody could ever take enough of it to get the benefit without falling asleep. So it's not really used as an antidepressant. It's actually used as a sleeping aid. So I think the smallest size pill it comes in is about 50 milligrams. I take a 25. I take a 50 and I cut it in half. And that to me is a fantastic sleep aid. It has no stage erosion and sleep. So again, I sometimes have patients say, well, God, can I just take an Ambien while I'm fasting? And I cringe when they say that because Ambien is such a crappy drug, but even a benzo would be better than Ambien. And I think trazodone is much better than a benzo. So look, that's a prescription drug. You're going to have to, I wouldn't suggest that somebody take that because they're fasting specifically. And you're going to have to have a discussion with your doctor. But for me personally, that's my biggest gun. And I rarely have to use it. I, I think the rigorous sleep hygiene coupled with the phosphatidylserine and the parsley stuff is really helpful. Also on the phosphatidylserine side, I mean, the data would suggest you can take up to 600 milligrams of that. I've never had to take that much, but you sort of have to titrate how much might be right for you. And again, if I didn't already state it, the purpose of the phosphatidylserine is to sort of silence the adrenal glands a little bit, which do tend to kick into overdrive when you're fasting. So you mentioned 